do is struggle translating imperative code to RxJS. In this video we will highlight why this translation may be challenging and we will go through the process with some examples. First it makes sense to know the differences between imperative code and reactive code. Simply put, imperative code says how something should be done. Reactive code on the other hand says what should be done. Code describing what should be done also is called declarative code. So reactive code is also declarative. This means in imperative code we are responsible for calling our functions with the correct values at the correct point of time. If we go the reactive way, we pass our functions to a library to delegate the call. So if we want to migrate imperative code to reactive code, we have to rethink the whole problem on a conceptual level. So let's have a look at the first example, which clarifies the process. The user can send and receive messages, and those messages are appended to the chat log. An imperative approach can look like this. First, we create a WebSocket connection. Then we listen to the messages which are sent via this socket. The messages are sent in JSON format, so we pass them accordingly and append them to the message log. Those are the incoming messages which are received by our application. Of course, the user can send messages himself, so we listen to clicks on the send button. When the button is clicked, we read out the message from the form and append it to the message log. Additionally, we JSON serialize the message and send it via WebSocket to the server. So this was an imperative solution. Let's now translate this to RxJS. RxJS conveniently provides us with a WebSocket subject. We can use the WebSocket factory to create such a subject. The observable part of this subject are our inbound messages. We can use the from event operator to create an observable which provides our button clicks. On such a button click we always want to read out the message from the form. The resulting observable provides our outbound messages. This was the producing part. Now we have our observables and our subject in place. Let's now define what should be done with those messages. We want to append all messages to the message log. So we can simply merge the inbound and outbound messages and append them to the message log. Additionally, we want to send the outbound messages to the server. To achieve this, we can simply listen to the outbound messages and send them to the WebSocket subject. This will automatically do the conversion to JSON and send it to the server. This example was quite simple. Let's have a look at a more complex example, which is a bit more challenging. In this example, we want to enable users to draw lines with the mouse. This is how an imperative solution could look like. First, we listen to mouse down events. Then we want to listen to the first mouse move event because we want to ensure that the user moves the mouse. On mouse up, we want to draw the line. If the mouse leaves the canvas, we want to abort the drag and the painting of the line. As we see, we have a lot of event registrations and unregistrations happening in this code. This kind of dynamic event listener management often translates to operators like switch map or take. Those and their variants trigger subscriptions and unsubscriptions of observables. Now let's see what the reactive solution could look like. First, let's set up our four event observables. We use the from event operator we already saw in the previous example to listen for the various events on the canvas. Our root observable is the mouse down event observable. Now we use the switch map operator because on every mouse down event we want to start our dragging from scratch. We also need the mouse down event because we derive a start point from it. The observable which we want to start listening to when the mouse down event happens is the move observable. 
when the user keeps on dragging the mouse, we don't want to register any event listeners anymore. So we only listen to the first move event after the mouse down event happened. We do this with the take operator. When the first move event happens, we want to listen for the next up event that is happening. For this we also use switch map. But if the mouse leaves the canvas before the up event is fired, we want to abort listening to this up event. We can do this with the take until operator. When an up event occurs, we can now derive a start and end point from the down event and the up event. Finally, we subscribe to this observable and take the start and end points that are emitted and draw our line. To be honest, in this example, I started with the reactive solution and then started implementing the imperative solution. I think in many cases it's easier to forget about the imperative solution and then start implementing the whole thing from scratch in a reactive way. It took me longer to implement the imperative solution than the reactive solution even though I already knew what should happen. In some situations it can be much harder to come up with an imperative solution than with a reactive solution. One example is the autocompletion search. This is the reactive solution and I won't provide you an imperative solution because I value our time. All in all, you should be familiar with some operators before you start translating imperative code to reactive code. A good starting point would be my video about mastering RxJS operators. And remember, never stop learning. See you in the next video.